In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take this video and lay a 3D element such as text or other object on top and have it cast a shadow. I'm going to be using Cinema 4D Lite to accomplish this. So to get started, I want to preview my video. I noticed that the street uh, and the people are moving here. The camera is moving actually. And so what I want to do is track this footage. After a while, uh, a bicycle comes through and I don't want that bicycle. So I'm going to back this up. Right at this point is where I'm going to make an edit. But to start with, I need to trim the footage so that my 3D camera tracking tool doesn't get confused with all these people walking by. So I'm going to go ahead and create a mask, take this layer, and pre-compose it. If you don't pre-compose this layer that has a mask, the 3D camera tracker won't work. You can call this something, press OK. And then I want to trim this layer because if I don't, the 3D camera track is going to track the entire clip of footage. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and trim this. You can trim by just grabbing the end of that and now you can press track camera. You can take a look at your 3D camera tracker and you'll notice that it's counting up. If I had tracked the entire piece of footage, not only would it get thrown off by that bicycle that drives by, but it would take in a lot longer as well. Now that the track is finished, I can hover over all these tracker marks. I'm gonna go ahead and click here to select these points and right click and say create text and camera. This places my text on the scene and you'll notice that the text moves with the video footage pretty nicely. It's a very subtle change, but that's what I want. I can take this text and from my character panel, I can resize it. But I want this text to be extruded in 3D. In order to make that happen, I can send this into Cinema 4D. To do that, I will go to File, Export, and Maxim Cinema 4D Exporter. When you get this message, if you haven't saved your project, you'll need to do that first. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my project. and then I'm going to try that again. It's going to complain that there's a 2D layer found and that's just my background video which that's okay I don't care that it's not going to be sending that into Cinema 4D that's not needed and I do like to preserve the editable text because by doing this I'll be able to change the font change the text it'll require you to save this Cinema 4D file. Once you do that it doesn't launch Cinema 4D in fact you'll have to go to your project panel and double click or file import to bring that file in. Now that I've brought the Cinema 4D file in, I can select it and choose Edit, Edit Original, and that will launch Cinema 4D Lite. Now if you're on this current version, you may get a choice that you have to make in order to use uh, the Cinema 4D Lite. You have to decide whether you want to use the full version or a light version. I don't have the full version on this computer, so I'm going to say No, and that will launch Cinema 4D Lite. I now have the file open in Cinema 4D Lite, and if I play this through, you'll see that there is the match move or the 3D camera tracking that was tracked inside of After Effects. Super cool. If I look over here in the object browser, I see I have my layers. This is a null. I have a 3D camera tracker. That's the information that was created by After Effects. And if I look, I have a text extrude. And this text extrude is the text that I created inside of After Effects. I can come down here to the object tab inside the text object and I can type something else can also choose a different font and I can also go to the extrude itself and make this as extruded as I'd like it to be. Other properties such as horizontal spacing and vertical spacing can also be done at this time as well. The next step I want to do is I want to create a plane and this plane will help to catch my shadow. So I'm going to come up here to these primitive objects and I'm going to choose plane. It's going to be way far off. It's going to be hard to move right underneath my NYC text, and that's where I need it. So I'm going to click and drag it underneath this null, this text null. I'm going to select that plane, go to coordinates, and make sure that all these P values, these position values, are set to zero. So you can highlight those and just zero, tab, zero, tab on your keyboard. And it puts it really close to position that needs to be. From here, I can make this plane really large. You can also press letter T on your keyboard and that will let you create a scale of this plane. You can move that back. There's also these little yellow nodes that, that allow you to resize this plane as well. Now that you have this done, we want to go ahead and add some lighting. So to do so, I can go ahead and push this light button up on top and again, your light's thrown way off to a far away distance and I need this light to be close to my plane. So I'm going to put this inside this text null and there it is and I go on to make sure just like I did with the plane that I zero this out. So zero, tab zero, tab zero 
and my light is there now and I'm going to press E to on my light to go ahead and activate the move controls and I'll be able to move this light on top of my text. I'm going to go ahead and press my camera tool and turn it off and then I can move around and you know reposition my light if I need to so that it's uh, in the right spot. Turn my camera back on and I can render this view to see what that's looking like which it looks okay but I don't think it's looking like a very realistic shadow that's going to be living on my city street so I want to go ahead and add another light and this light uh, doesn't have to be zeroed out it can just be kind of placed up in the sky and the reason is, is I'm going to take this light I'm going to go to the general category and I'm going to make sure that I have ambient illumination turned on. It's like turning on the lights in the room. It's not necessarily a spotlight, it's just a light that lives inside the room itself that lights everything. And I'm going to bring the intensity down. Now if I click the render view button again, I still don't see a shadow. And the reason is that the light that I initially created, which is this light inside of my text null, doesn't have any shadow property turned on. So I can come down to the shadow property and where it says none, I'm going to say shadow map soft. When I push that, uh, render button again you'll now see a pretty interesting looking shadow show if I want to move that position in the shadow I can move my light over and re-render it and you'll see that the, the shadow is now changed uh, if you'd like to reposition your text you can do so like I said earlier though you don't want to move it around too much because uh, it might look weird once you put it inside of After Effects so that looks kind of interesting at this point I can go ahead and maybe make a different color um, different material. I'm going to double click on my material here. I'm going to call this uh, Mr. Blue and this will allow me to change the color. That looks pretty nice. And I'm going to apply this to my text. But I also want a really glossy shiny side. So I'm going to take this existing text material that I have. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to call it uh, shiny. And I'm going to leave all these properties on. I'm going to jump right over to reflectance. I'm going to choose add to add a GGX which is going to be super shiny it's kind of bumpy looking you see it's got kind of a fuzz to it and that's because the roughness is on at 10% I'm going to bring that down that looks pretty good if I want to have a little bit of color brought to it I can go to this color section and I can add some color maybe I want this to be like a, some kind of yellow and you see it's still not there so you go back down to reflectance and in this layer one this is my super shininess that I just added but this the default spe uh, specular will let me add some of that yellow back by bringing down this layer one you see that changes that there so I, I kinda like that I'm gonna also bring down the reflection strength just a little bit just so it's not so strong of a reflection and I'm gonna close this off and I can reapply this to my text now it's not applying here and I see over here my text extrude I have multiple options multiple materials I mean so I'm going to go ahead and select uh, this second this third material and delete it it's already applied initially but this blue tag material tag is overriding this first tag so I'm going to select this blue tag I'm going to go ahead and press my camera tool and turn it off and then I can move around and you know reposition my light if I need to so that it's uh, in the right spot turn my camera back on and I can render this view to see what that's looking like which it looks okay but I don't think it's looking like a very realistic shadow that's going to be living on my city street so I want to go ahead and add another light and this light uh, doesn't have to be zeroed out it can just be kind of placed up in the sky and the reason is, is I'm going to take this light I'm going to go to the general category and I'm going to make sure that I have ambient illumination turned on. It's like turning on the lights in the room. It's not necessarily a spotlight. It's just a light that lives inside the room itself that lights everything. And I'm going to bring the intensity down. Now if I click the render view button again, I still don't see a shadow. And the reason is that the light that I initially created, which is this light inside of my text null, doesn't have any shadow property turned on. So I can come down to the shadow property and where it says none, I'm going to say shadow map soft. When I push that, uh, render button again you'll now see a pretty interesting looking shadow show if I want to move that position in the shadow I can move my light over and re-render it and you'll see that the, the shadow is now changed uh, if you'd like to reposition your text you can do so like I said earlier though you don't want to move it around too much because uh, it might look weird once you put it inside of After Effects 
So that looks kind of interesting. At this point, I can go ahead and maybe make a different color, um, different material. I'm going to double click on my material here. I'm going to call this uh, Mr. Blue, and this will allow me to change the color. That looks pretty nice. And I'm going to apply this to my text. But I also want a really glossy, shiny side. So I'm going to take this existing text material that I have. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to call it uh, shiny. And I'm going to leave all these properties on. I'm going to jump right over to reflectance. I'm going to choose add to add a GGX, which is going to be super shiny. It's kind of bumpy looking. You see it's got kind of a fuzz to it. And that's because the roughness is on at 10%. I'm going to bring that down. That looks pretty good. If I want to have uh, a little bit of color brought to it, I can go to this color section and I can add some color. Maybe I want this to be like a, some kind of yellow. And I, you see it's still not there. So you go back down to reflectance and in this layer one, this is my super shininess that I just added. But this the default spe uh, specular will let me add some of that yellow back by bringing down this layer one. You see that changes that there. So I, I kind of like that. I'm going to also bring down the reflection strength just a little bit, just so it's not so strong of a reflection. And I'm going to close this off, and I can reapply this to my text. So I have these two materials in here, but the blue isn't showing up, and I want it to show up on the sides or the shell of this text. So if I select it here, I can come down here and type letter S. But I don't see any changes happening. Well, currently, I'm in the version R21 of Cinema 4D Lite. And for some reason, uh, the version in After Effects doesn't currently line up perfectly. I'm using After Effects 2020. So what you have to do is select the text extrude, and underneath the caps section, click Migrate. And this will add a couple new uh, tabs in here, and your caps section changes uh, quite a bit. But you'll now notice that this is updated, and now my shell is now blue. I can also select this text extrude and maybe add some... Uh, roundness to that text. That looks kind of cool. I like that. Uh, maybe that yellow is a little pukey looking, so I can select this material here and can change it in here, or I can double click down here and uh, adjust it either place. It's all the same. I kind of like this floating panel because I suppose that's just how I, I learned how to use the program. Uh, and you can come in here and, and change these colors to whatever you like. You can press the render button again and you'll see what that looks like. Now the trouble is I can render this in here and I can see my plane, but there's no real easy way to remove this plane if I want this to be just on top of my video. So for example, if I were to save this project and go back into After Effects, I'll notice that this will kind of hiccup a little bit and then it will change once I drop it in here. So I'm going to drop it down here to this layer. I can go ahead and hide this other text layer that was the original text layer. And it shows up in here, and I don't see my video down here because it's being cut off. I can go to my project panel and drag another instance of this MP4 down to the bottom, just so it can show up here. But I still can't see my video underneath because this plane is in the way. I can't see my shadow either. That can be fixed pretty easily just by taking the C4D file, going to the effect controls, and making sure that software uh, renderer is switched to the standard or final and now I see my shadow. So the next goal is going to be to remove that background. Back in Cinema 4D, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple things that might be a little confusing, but I guess you could review this video a couple times to uh, get the gist of what's happening. I'm going to select my text extrude and go to Tags. From here, I'm going to go to Render Tags and choose Compositing. From this Compositing tag down here, I can choose Object Buffer and choose Enable Object Buffer. This is going to let us remove basically our text from the plane. You'll also need to go to your render settings and under multipass choose object buffer. We also want to be able to pass over our shadow so I can go to multipass and choose shadow. There's lots of different multipass options in here. One that's probably really popular is ambient inclusion uh, that produces some really nice beautiful shadows uh, but that's for another lesson. But that's all we have to do. From here, I'm going to go ahead and save my Cinema 4D file. Nothing else has been done other than adding this compositing tag and changing these render settings. Then I can go back to After Effects, and then I need to do something to bring those multipass elements in. I'm going to turn on my Cinema 4D multipass, and I can start working with these. But first, I need to bring those elements down here. We're going to be using track mats to pull away the plane and also to 
extract the text from this image. So I'm going to duplicate this City Street C4D layer three times. I'm going to rename this top layer Shadow. And this third layer, I'm going to rename this Object Buffer. On the Shadow layer, I'm going to choose the Set Multipass, and I'm going to choose my Shadow. I'm going to select the Object Buffer. It's like, whoa, looks pretty crazy. In fact, before I do that, uh, I can come here and I can go to the track mat and I can say Luma inverted. It's like, okay, what did that do? I don't know. But we're not done yet. So let's select the object buffer. I can press set multipass. And on this drop down here, I'm going to choose object buffer and hit OK. So if I come to this street crosswalk here, I can go ahead and select Luma mat and that will punch through that text. Just to show you what's happening here, this layer here and this object buffer is just punching out the text from that plane. This guy up here is only punching out the shadow. And so with these two track mats enabled, I now have my city text here, and this is looking pretty good. Probably could have made some better choices with the font, but eh, you get the gist of it. So if I want to continue to adjust this, it's really easy. I can go back into Cinema. Maybe this uh, color blue or maybe this shiny material was a bad choice. I can come in here and I can uh, adjust it. Maybe the font wasn't so smart. Uh, I'm kind of beating myself up today. Uh, these colors and fonts weren't the best choices. And I continue to fall down that pit. Okay need to go to design school or something but if I hit R for rotation and maybe I rotate this thing and I see what that looks like I have a new shadow and the benefit of setting this up this way is I can continue to adjust this image I could animate it or, or do whatever and it will continue to adjust in After Effects automatically so if I save this file jump back into After Effects It'll blink and then it'll automatically adjust and now I have a shadow. Looks like it's there on the street. You can do a better job of making this more realistic. Of course, that's for another lesson. But what you can also do is maybe the shadow isn't dark enough or it's too dark. I can come back to cinema and I can take my ambient light, which I'll just call this my ambient light, okay? And I can bring the intensity up or down. If I bring it down, it becomes a darker shadow. There it goes too dark so maybe I can bring that up just a little bit it was at 67 maybe I bring this around 60 save my file move back to After Effects and that's a little lighter there another step that I can do to add some more interest to this text and make it feel like it's more in the scene is I can add a sky so my sky is up here at the top and it needs material so I'm going to double click down here to add another material and that material is going to be under color I'm going to go to Texture and choose Load Image. The image I'm going to load is the same image of the City Street Crosswalk, which is what I have inside of After Effects. So I'm going to bring that in. You want to make sure that's copied into your project folder, otherwise it won't be visible inside of After Effects. There it is. And I can go and close this out, and I'm going to apply this to my sky. You can just drag that onto the sky, or you can drag it up here, either way. And now you have the sky. If you press the Render View button, you'll see that this element will start affecting your text if you have a reflection. So in this example, my, most of my shininess is on the front of this, and you might not see that reflection. So I'm going to go into my extrude here, and I'm going to flip-flop these objects. And I'm going to make sure that this extrude here, which is my white, will be on the front. And this blue ball thing is going to be my shell. So there you go. Now, if I render this out, you'll see that the video that is a part of the sky material will be reflected on the shell of this text. So if I save this file and move back into After Effects, you'll see that it'll update. And once I've rendered this out, I'll see the reflections show up on the side of my text and it moves with the scene because it's been tracked. Hope this helps.